Welcome back, everyone, to Security Weekly. Are you looking for a career change? Tenable Network Security is hiring everything from programmers to researchers. Check out all of the available positions even at securityweekly.com forward slash tenable jobs. If you're listening to this show, check out the following two positions. Both are technical and both are work from home. Nessus Vulnerability Research Engineer and C Software Engineer. You can find all of the jobs available from Tenable Network Security at securityweekly.com forward slash Tenable Jobs. Dude, does that guy with the epic beard work there? Uh, he does. All those people in that picture do, in fact, work for Tenable nice, Network Security. Nice, Because yes. that's an epic beard. Yes. Security w- Weekly listeners receive 10% off products in our store with the discount code IHACKNAKED. That's when the T-shirt should be up on the T-shirt. <laughs> what were you saying about doing it yourself for a higher professional? Here's <laughs> the T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. We love you, Nick. Don't forget to register for Source Boston. Cue the Source Boston. Hey! hey. Coming up April 25th through the 28th. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll be speaking there. We're going to have a booth. It's going to be lots of fun. Now, we're going to talk about Bash Command Show us line. that beautiful bean footage. I mean, oh. <laughs> Bash <laughs> Command Line we, tips and bef- tricks. Before yes. we do that. Oh, we have a new cocktail. Apollo, tell us about what we're drinking. This is the old... What is it? Old Fashioned Jack. Old fa- Jack is very old fashioned. So He's just very old. I've, uh, I've chatted with Jack a little bit on Twitter here and there. And I asked him, you know, hey, you know, you clearly know what your cocktails are. What is like, what is one of your most favorite liquors? And he said, oh, I really like a good Geneva. And I'm like, I have mm. no idea what that is. <laughs> okay. This is like a month ago, too. It was very mm. recently. So I went out and bought some. And it's really interesting stuff. It's basically somewhere between a gin and a whiskey. So oh. what's cool is you use a malted grain, usually like uh, wheat or rye or barley, as your base spirit, and you age it in barrel like you would a whiskey for a little under a year or so. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's neat is the liquor itself, you look at it, has a nice kind of golden straw color to it. Mm. Um, is that like an old Tom gin, similar? It's, uh, it's actually before that. So the history of it is, um, they call it Dutch courage, basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> back, back, back in the war of <laughs> 1658... I'm sure this is where, you know... This is where Jack picked up where, his fondness this for where, it. This is where Jack found it. <laughs> <laughs> he's not here, so it's easy. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's, we do uh, all of here. It doesn't matter if he's here. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, anyways. That's, 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 where it was, that's where it was first introduced to uh, Europe. Or, uh, yeah, Britain. Um, but, yeah. So, that was the basis of it. And, again, it's kind of like medicinal things. It's actually similar to, like, how the Italians did vermouth. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. get some really strong alcohol and throw in some herbs. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a common thing all over the world. So they did that, and then what happened was around the uh, 17, 1800s, uh, they were doing a lot of taxation and things like that, so that's where Old Tom Gin came from. Um, what happened was for about a 15-year period, gin was just super popular because they were importing Geneva all the time. Mm-hmm. Put up taxes, well, what happens? You're going to make it locally. Right. Mm-hmm. So they did that for a while, and then they started, making, uh, they started taxing that. Old Tom Gin is really funny. The name comes from a uh, uh, large cat, a large black cat, Old Tom. And what you would do is the story is you'd go up, you'd find these little, uh, um, not statues, but like little black signs of a black cat. You put in a coin, it's like this little slot, this little spout, Mm -hmm. and the bartender would kind of pour you a little shot. Oh, that's funny. That's the whole history of old Tom Chin. But Um, I I find those gin, they're not like your Tangare. Oh, God, no. A Tangare is like pretty terrible, actually. I honestly, I like gin and I hate Tangare. Yeah, okay. Um, Because when most people think of gin, they think of Tangare. Yeah, they think of uh, that kind of, in New England, we usually say it's like a pine smell. It is. And Mm -hmm. that's where juniper comes from. Yep. Yeah. Um, So this right here doesn't really have much juniper at all. At all. There's a little bit, but not much. But it's still a gin. Exactly. It's a gin that I like. Yes, very much. It's yeah. very good, very good cocktail. So again, like mixing it. for it, really fun. It's somewhere between gin and whiskey. You can do a lot of cool things with that. Yeah. Um, old cocktail, the Martinez. Yes, you he makes. Use he, that. Jack loves the Martinez. <sighs> yep. Yeah. Um, for people that know that, it's basically a uh, a Manhattan with gin. Yeah. Yep. And he uses the old Tom gin. He uses old Tom gin in yep. his Martinez. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so you go further a little and bit it's more. Very good too. Yes. Is can you make a dirty Martinez? Oh, it kind of sounds like a dirty Sanchez. Of course you can. But, it's dirty. different. It's his yeah, brother. Anything dirty. That's, that, that, that's, what, that's when you take the, the uh, Luxardo cherries and you wipe it across your upper lip first. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Can that's you a make a dirty Sanchez? It's the dirty yes. Martinez. I We're like going to talk about listener submitted bash tips and tricks. Basically, what we've done is we've outsourced the show to our listeners. First, we had the cocktail thing. Now, we've got the bash command line tips, which aren't quite as tasty as cocktails, but they'll have to do. And uh, the first one comes in submitted by James, and his command line tip is bang, 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 bang. I like to bang, bang. I like to bang, bang, too. 
Bang bang is a really cool thing to do. Isn't it? He said the bang bang command has probably extended the life of my fingers by ten years, and everyone appreciates an extended finger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everybody loves an extended finger for a bang bang. That's right. <laughs> wow. So, Yikes. Larry, for our listeners, tell us what the bang bang. Does. I actually have no idea. I've never used it. It's your previous command. That's what I was thinking yeah. it was because I know if you command. do yeah. history and you do single bang with the, item the number from history, yes, yeah, we'll do that. You've never yeah. done bang bang. Bang bang. bang, bang, bang is your previous a lot with pseudo. Sometimes I'll, I'll write a, a full command, very long one. Hit enter. Says nope. You uh, you don't have Batman pearls. And you're like, oh shit. shit. Then you just pseudo, do bang, pseudo bang bang. Pseudo bang bang. 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 That's a good combination. So what I'll do is I'll Carlos for that I'll do up arrow control A pseudo, mm-hmm. which I found if you are multiple layers in screen deep, <laughs> control A means something else altogether. Yeah, yes, find out that one <laughs> could be bad. <laughs> yes, and then you're like, ah, oh, shit, God, damn it, the fucker. God yeah. damn it. That's one of the tests I'm working on this week. Is um, I'm multiple layers deep in SSH sessions, and they're all proxied together. Ah, uh, so so Larry, when when you got that going on, that's when you learn how to change the escape character. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, believe me, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've been there too. <laughs> uh. Oh well, it's not beautiful the first time. You're like, I just dropped five sessions. Damn it! God damn it! Yeah, the next command line tip is an alternative to screen submitted by Mick. Yeah, Tmux. Um, he's Tmux. Yeah, alternative to screen. It says there's a little bit of a learning curve, but it's very like powerful. screen doesn't have a learning curve. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank, thanks, <laughs> this <man. is> true. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, I I I use the heck out of screen lately. Yeah, screen's my it's still my go-to. Screen's my hero. Yeah. Um, this next command might be cooler than screen, though. I don't know. It might be a toss-up. It's submitted by Chris. It's a play command to generate Star Trek's USS Enterprise warp idle noise from the CLI. Ooh. Yes, nice. this is this is a time waster. So if you have play, um, usually I'm like remote. So if it has a sound card, it's in a data center somewhere, but not as. Effective. So you could make the data center sound like the Enterprise, which is that pretty would be cool. cool. That would be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, this next one I actually spent a little time with. It was submitted by uh, user, listener Keith. He says he uses awk to look into slash proc slash mem info and find the mem total and then car, uh, calculates the corresponding size into gigabytes from the turnable. And he used a little awk script to do that. Um, and I modified it so that it would also it would give you the total memory and the free memory in one command. Because oftentimes, Sweet. as Keith said, developers come to him like Apollo and say it's running slow. Yeah. <laughs> And this, this command can help you with that. See, I always had a problem with orc. I found I find I always find orc very awkward. <laughs> really? Yeah, I do. Spend some time with orc. Orc is wonderful. No, no, I much I much prefer, you know, catting and piping for sed and ed and Yeah. Yeah. Orc is or, useful or, though. Very I, useful. And, it can shorten these, your command lines by a lot. You can get rid of some like, of your greps. It can re- definitely replace a grep and print out a column, mm-hmm. which well, is very good, useful. Good oh, hell yeah. Um, I, didn't, I didn't realize you'd ever turn down a good grep. This, well, I tell you, sometimes I turn so, down a good grep for a good awk. So to give you the, 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 the ideas that I, I use Evernote, and I have a note titled awk one-liners. Awk ex- one-liners. So Nick and I were like whiteboarding out this Python script to do all this like really amazing, complicated stuff. And I'm like... That's going to take me like three days to code that, dude. Like, I don't have three days. And I came back from literally like five minutes later. I'm like, dude, I, I did it in awk. <laughs> I did it in a bash command <laughs> one liner. But it, now, <laughs> now, as Tom Liston would say, you have a problem and you used awk to, fu- to solve it. Now you have two problems. Yes. <laughs> now, what's funny is you raised a really interesting point where you said we could do it in Python or we could do it in the command line. Yeah. So I work with data scientists. And what's really funny is, you know, sometimes we have a problem. We're like, oh, we're going to use Mongo. We're going to do Docker <laughs> Store. We basically <laughs> over-architect the problem. Yeah. And then the more senior data scientist says, hold on, let me, let me write you a bash script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah there you go. Seriously, it's amazing. And he goes, cat, pipe, orc, said. <laughs> exactly. There's just something. It's extremely, I mean, the whole unique dash C and then the whole, it, the whole thing it's, is... It's functional programming. Yeah. And what's really amazing, which is really interesting about it is the performance on that is ridiculously fast. It is. It's the same speed, mm-hmm. if not maybe faster than a Python Perl or Ruby script. I've or seen... Uh, I can't remember what the article was. The guy was literally warning his... Uh, 
his Bash script was running 100 times faster than Mongo. Yeah. And you think about it, too. Why would that be? Well, every single step is a compiled executable in C. Yeah, mm. yeah, you got exactly. microcode optimizations, right, everything right. in there. Like, it's amazing. And it's really mature code, too, that's been exactly. around forever. So. Well, and, the, and this, this is the challenge with uh, high-level abstracted languages that are running some sort of inter uh, bytecode interpretation. Mm -hmm. they, they just don't have. Mm. They don't have near the performance. You know, and, that, and that's what we lose. <laughs> We, we gain an awful lot in terms of the syntactic nice and neatness of the language and, and, and the, the, the readability and codability, but we lose from the, from the bytecode interpretation side. So, um, the next one... Oh, sorry, Joff. I didn't mean to cut you off there. Oh, no, no. Go ahead. You cut me off any time, Paul. So, I'll, we just dropped you <laughs> off. I'm going okay, to so pipe you to awk and then cut. cut. Okay. That's right. No, pipe him to DevNull. <laughs> uh, so then uh, the next one was by Apollo. And he says he runs this uh, on all your personal projects. All my personal projects. And you, you create an alias command called YOLO, which is kind of interesting. Uh, well, and he does a git commit with the comment, deal with it, and then does a git push. <laughs> more, oh, more, I like more. that. You've got, you've got like an alias to do a git commit and git push all together. I'm, yeah. I'm even better, it, does a get, it forces the git commit to master. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, origin Again, master. Ner yeah, ner nerdy joke on that one, but yeah, basically, um, for the handful of people out there that don't use Git, there's probably five of them. <laughs> They're still using Google Code for another couple weeks. They're using SVN and CVS. Yes, yes. <laughs> SVN. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, basically, any change I make, it's going to production or it's going to live. <laughs> that's Which awesome. Which personal small projects? Yeah, that's not really mine. And, and, and your and your comment is always deal with it. That's exactly, fantastic. yeah. Fantastic. Wish I had my sunglasses, so I just go deal with it. <laughs> nice, nice. But uh, all righty. <clears throat> with that, we're gonna take a very short break. Come back and talk about our stories of the week. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere.